Singapore. Sinovac finally submits requested data. Sinovac applied for its vaccine to be made available under the pandemic special access route in December last year. After receiving the application from Sinovac, the Health Sciences Authority HSA, found that the data provided was inadequate, and hence requested in March this year for additional data so as to be able to finish its assessment. As Sinovac had not sent the requested data, their vaccine was unable to be included in the national vaccination program and was only made available under the special access route. But now, with Sinovac having finally submitted the requested data on 5 July this year, the assessment was able to continue at long last. In the event that Sinovac's vaccine is approved here, it will most likely be included in our national vaccination program, meaning that the vaccine will be recognized by the government as well, meaning that those who receive it from then on will have administrative fees waived, have complications from arising from uh, the vaccine covered, and will allow the vaccinated to skip prevent testing, just like those who received the approved Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines. Ravi Menon on building an innovative economy. On Wednesday, Monetary Authority of Singapore MAS Managing Director Ravi Menon gave a speech on building an innovative economy to the Institute of Policy Studies. From next year onwards, assuming no changes occur with net migration and foreign worker inflows, the workforce will begin to decline in size. Hence, as we can no longer depend on expanding our labour force to raise our GDP growth, then we have no choice but to pursue productivity growth to boost our economy. The keys to achieving productivity growth are by increasing our capital to labour ratio, growth in human capital, and innovation. In particular, innovation must be at the heart of our new economy. Through improving domestic-oriented sectors, fully digitalizing our economy and greening our economy. Improving domestic-oriented sectors. Firstly, our productivity growth has been uneven across sectors, with export-oriented sectors such as manufacturing and information and communications technology, ICT, services seeing the most improvement, while domestic-oriented sectors have generally fared poorly. The domestic-oriented sectors, which employ one in seven residents, only contributes to 8% of GDP. By reducing our reliance on foreign labour in education and continuous training, healthcare, social services, entertainment and recreation, wages will rise naturally, attracting more Singaporeans. We should place special emphasis on making education and healthcare more export-oriented and capitalize on our reputation of providing high-quality education and medical treatments. By doing so, we will attract foreign investments in terms of technology and human capital, allowing us to raise productivity and wages. A rise in wages in the above areas would inevitably drive up living costs, meaning that our desire to have a high-wage, low-cost economy, especially considering that we will be weaning off our reliance on cheap foreign labour, will become simply unviable. Instead, we must shift to a high-productivity, high-wage, high-cost economy, where though everything will cost more, with higher overall wages, most will be able to afford those costs. To make it even better, a virtuous cycle will ensue with increased willingness and ability to pay more for domestic-oriented services, resulting in higher quality services rendered, and vice versa. Fully digitalizing our economy. Secondly, to achieve an innovative economy is to digitalize business processes fully from end to end. It would not be good to merely digitalize a small segment of a value chain, like accepting e-payments, but then fail to digitalize the rest of the value chain, such as conducting transactions and paperwork via only physical records. Instead, companies must seek to digitalize all processes, otherwise business advancements will be bottlenecked by segments that still use traditional methods. Another problem is the lack of interoperability, which means that different organizations oftentimes have difficulties digitally connecting in a seamless manner. Through collective governance, common standards, open architecture, and interoperable infrastructure, collaboration will then be possible across all levels of society. Greeting our economy. 
Finally, the green economy is going to be a fundamental fixture in Singapore as it will be a source of numerous jobs in sustainable energy and development. To boost our credibility as a green economy, we must first gain trust by enforcing that our companies measure and disclose their carbon footprints, set emission targets for them, and report any violations of environmental and pollution laws. We should also raise our carbon taxes, which should not harm our economy too much, given that there are many countries worldwide doing the same thing right now. To ensure that the regressive carbon tax does not hurt the lower income groups the hardest, we should waive carbon taxes for them, just like how we do it for GST offsets. We can also distribute them uh, the revenue connect collected through carbon taxes to them, should it be insufficient. A Singapore core with global talent. While it would be unpopular to have too many foreigners here, especially with the political climate as of late, it would, be, it would still be necessary for us to retain a large number of them here so as to tap on their expertise and investment. As such, to prevent the situation from becoming too undesirable for locals, we should stop foreign workers from depressing our wages by raising the minimum qualifying salary to 4500 Furthermore, instead of rejecting entire sources of foreign labour wholesale, we should crack down on those responsible. Hence, those who are found to have engaged in discriminatory hiring should be punished via imposing of financial penalties, reducing bonuses, and freezing promotions. However, no matter what, as an international hub, our ability to maintain our current standard of living is dependent on having an access to a constant stream of international talent and serving an international market. By accepting mainly high quality foreign labor, we can get the, both, the best of both worlds and continue prospering.